The one who murdered Sayaka. Is it really one of us? <laughs> Is everyone here? Okay then. Please board the elevator in front of you, which will transport you to the courtroom. Where all your fates will be decided. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Okay, we can talk to everybody. I guess we can figure that out. <laughs> well then, the time has finally come. Are you ready? You know what I mean. Well, I did my job. Count on the rest of you from here. Mm -hmm. So the school basement has become the darkened stage. <laughs> we're all uh, we're all here to bear witness to Mr. Neogi's final curtain call. <laughs> well, did you find anything that might actually prove your innocence? Being so insistent, even though you're obviously k killed her, it's very impressive. I guess I have no choice but to get on this elevator. Well, then. Let us begin. Yes, indeed. Good idea. That's not what I wanted to click on, but hey. wait. Are you scared? No, no, no. Scared isn't Makoto. quite right. I said it before, but it's up to you to uncover the mystery surrounding this case itself. If you don't, you'll never come to grips with the truth. I need to uncover the truth of Sayaka's death. I didn't need someone else to tell me to do that. In Sayaka's honor, I swear I'll find out who the real killer is. As I raised my voice, it gave myself courage. And I turned, trembling with anticipation, towards the elevator. With every step, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. Everyone else was already on the elevator when I finally stepped on it. The doors closed and the elevator started to move. The steel box descended with heavy clunking sounds towards the school basement. I wonder if this is how Death Row imminent inmate feels when his time finally oh. comes. Rather than that, it's is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his final judgment? Oblivious to our shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further and further into the bowels of the school. You finally arrived! What do you think? Does it feel like a real courtroom? It's like a Hollywood movie set, right? Ugh, shit. Not even close. Uh, well now. Okay, okay, everyone. Find your assigned seats and sit yeah. on down. Hurry up now. Hurry up. We did what he said and found our seats. The seats were arranged in a giant circle. It was set up so that everyone could see everyone else. Which also meant it was easy for anyone to transfer their attention and unease onto anything, anyone else. The air seemed to grow heavy as we sat there. And so the curtain on our first case had opened. A deadly judgment. Deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. And a deadly fate. A deadly class trial. Pre-trial prep is what we've just entered into. Set what? skills. We don't have any skills. Cool. Last trial. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course! Okay, then. 
Everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Oh, that's not gonna work. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? I love that this is voice acted. I actually stand this. I'm here for it. Go for it, queen. What's going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Friendship penetrates? Ew. Okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Because it's Monokumas. Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay, that about does it for the preamble. Get ready to get started. First up is the case summary. Now, let the class trial begin. It's about to begin. The debate to decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak out about everything. Because it isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. Your first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. As things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, characters will speak one after another without pause. It is up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried within these statements. What this means is that you'll have to use your truth bullets to refute anything they say. Any relevant truth bullets you have found during your investigation will be loaded in the truth cylinder. Use the mouse, then f use the mouse to aim, and then fire with the left mouse button. We don't have mouse, so how do I do that? Pay close attention to the character statements, as your truth bullets to or you use your truth bullets to blast the right ones. Note that you can run out of time and you'll automatically fail, so please be careful. Press the escape key during the arguments, and you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. Okay, so how do I do this? I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono. Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that... The killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. I assert that the one who was murdered will kill the murder. In the bathroom, so it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. Oh, do I aim at the word? The one who was murdered. Yeah, and the murder took in the bathroom. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. I do aim at the no, words. Okay. Okay. I aim at the words. Oh my god. I was aiming at the people. Great. Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. S sorry Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. So the knife. We need to determine what was used to kill Sayaka. The knife. So what was used to kill her? 
There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. So the killer used some random knife they had on him. No, that's wrong. No, I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Exactly, Well, Kyoko. we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? Yes, absolutely. She's right. There's got to be a breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it because I know I'm not the killer. There's a bit more to learn about nonstop debates. Would you like to hear more? Yes. You can concentrate by holding down the RB button. While you're concentrating, your time will slow down, so you'll pay closer attention to what so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. On top of that, it will steady your aim, making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating this consumes your focus gauge, and if that gauge empties, you cannot concentrate. But the focus gauge will recover over time, so it'll let your brain take a rest. No need to rush. Well then, good luck. Okay, we, we figured that out when we were messing with buttons and trying to figure out what to do. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret when nobody was in the dining hall. And then he went and stabbed Sayaka with it. So he really did do it? Mm -hmm. Yes, then it's been decided. We've reached the end. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. I figured that there'd be a but point where, where there's multiple. Where get us? But there's not. Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. No, that's wrong. I figured, like, I thought there were going to be multiple, like, things we could break with that. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're going to say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? Well, I went to get some tea from the kitchen last night and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea, I went back to the kitchen to wash the glass and one of the knives were gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking the tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall, but I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So there's no incentive. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, 
and they just didn't know about the rule. Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops, did I say that out loud? Anyway, <laughs> I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife, so I'm not the killer. Okay, so then, who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. Yes, Sakura. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um... Well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. So... I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But... I'm a girl. I... Uh, yeah. What the... what the... yeah. You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh yeah, that's true! One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because... They're not here anymore. Someone who's not here, are you talking Sayaka. about... She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. So Sayaka? So the only person who took the knife out from the kitchen was... A gun! Then, then Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. She very much was. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the Which kitchen. is something that I had thought about, right? Because she's the only one that had made mention of that kitchen. So... She clearly knew that that was there. But then... Cause she, and she said she specifically wanted self-defense. So she brought the knife into the room for self-defense purposes. Then... Somebody broke into the room, caused a struggle, killer found the knife, killed Sayaka, and then cleaned As up. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water, but most likely... Then the person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all. Bayakura keeps flipping it on us. Like, okay, I, I know for a fact that Toko did not do it. But I have had suspicions on Leon and Bayakura the entire time, and they are not helping this. Leon's just saying nothing and being quiet, and the Bayakura keeps trying to flip it. No, you're wrong. So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Mm hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. I... Uh, it's like, who do I trust? Because, like, here's the thing. The 11037 is Leon backwards. D. 
damn, if I don't do something, they're gonna have, they're gonna blame me for the murder. They don't, nope, they don't understand. If they're gonna convict me, everyone Hold else on. is gonna die. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Here's your first hangman's gambit. Would you like to know more? Absolutely. As things advance further in the class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. At this point, it's time to reel an important parts related to the incident in question. You'll have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around and the letters already known. In Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. Use the left shift to aim. Okay. If you shoot down the wrong letters, you'll suffer damage to your influence gauge. If your gauge reaches zero or if time runs out, you fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. Something that should have been there at the scene but wasn't. Must be that must be a crucial point. We can figure out what side something is. Hangman's Gambit. Four letters. Oh, I haven't. Okay. I have to, like, murder them fast. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I understand. I knew it, was the, it had to do with the lint roller, but I was thinking the lint roller specifically. That's right. There wasn't a single hair on the floor. So... The culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then... Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? Yeah. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? Yes. The killer struggled getting into the bathroom, and the evidence that proves it is... I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. <clears throat> You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? 
Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. Ugh! Leon! Why would... You're not helping! You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Okay, you know, Kiyoko said it was a bewildering act. I almost didn't notice it at first. That is that the key point there? So there's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? 100%. From here on out, a number of weak spots will start going up. No matter how many weak spots, there's essentially only one lie or contradiction in that debate. That's what I was waiting for. Okay. What I'm trying to say is not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. But use the truth on the wrong one, and not only will you fail to refute what they said, but you'll lower your trust with everyone, and, and your influencer gain gauge will take damage. Now, it's important that you influencer gauge, that if your influencer gauge reaches zero, you will fail. You will have to rely on your own logic to determine the weak spots and the actual lies or contradictions. Well then, good luck and have fun. Bathroom door frame. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Yes. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. That's true. She then fled into the bathroom. True. Then the killer ran after her. Yep. And they got into the bathroom. Yes, they did. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. Yeah. And finally, the culprit had Sayaka cornered. And to finish the job, they stabbed her with the kitchen knife. It was you, wasn't it, Makoto? I admit it. We already know the answer. It's obvious, but my, my bathroom door wouldn't open. But the real reason for that is... The incident took place in Makoto's room. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Okay, everything Kyoko was saying Then is the true. killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. She didn't lock it. No, that's wrong. We don't the the, the boys' bathroom don't have locks. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all. The girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep, true as true can be. But you know... You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> That's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. One important detail. Something the killer didn't know. For some reason, they were convinced the door was locked. Which means one important... I got it! Yeah, that's it. The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. 
Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But, the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. That's what I've been trying to okay. tell you. Then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority Hell rules? No. Do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Okay, oh, Owie. You. You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's yes. possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then, maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? The reason why the no way Sayaka invited her killer in the room, I already know the answer. Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open the door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point in even switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? W what the hell is that supposed to mean? Wh I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? There's something I want to talk to you about, just us two. In five minutes, come see my room. Can come see me in my room, Sayaka. Check the nameplate. To make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appeared. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. 
But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? N no, I didn't. But... Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Then that note, Sayaka wrote but, it? But why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then, pay attention. Oh, back to this, okay. Make your argument. Dorm nameplates, okay. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yes. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. Hmm. It certainly would seem that way. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note, they would not have any... Mm. It certainly would seem that way. I didn't get it in time. Hold on. Sayaka and Makoto switch what in the note. It specifically I see. Then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto... No, that's wrong. The nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got... switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right. Okay, then who did it? Sayaka. There's only one person that could have switched it. I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. There's something I want to talk to you about, just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't go to the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Yeah. Why did she do this? 
And clearly it was somebody that she trusts. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. But how the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? A gun! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! We already I had to figure see, that out. I see, And so the truth draws ever closer. Alright, then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? And what led to Sayaka's death? That's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? Starting with the next debate... I will start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. Just look at... Just like with weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to figure out each statement. I'll be to rotate the cylinder. By the way, if your logic's difficulty is set to climb, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. Oh no. Am I set to mean? For our purpose this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck. Have fun. It's already set to mean, so this, this is good for me, actually. Replica sword, kitchen knife set, replica sword sheath. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. The sword was used first, and then the knife came afterwards. Is that really the order of events? That leads to some unexplainable details. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit ah. them and they killed. So that's exactly what happened. I think it's Toga's thing is wrong. When the fighting broke the culprit, and that's when the first sword-based and that's what broke. So she, she grabbed the kitchen knife she had. But then the culprit oh and killed. So that's exactly what happened. 
When the flame grabbed the culprit, and that's when the fucking sword based sneak attack, and that's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. Shoot! When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword based sneak attack. No, that's wrong. <laughs> 